Hello, my friends and fellow mono game developers. My name is Chris Whitley, also known as Eric's Total Dev in the mono game community. And today I'd like to try something a little bit different. I'm going to be creating a short form video discussing a very specific topic within mono game instead of doing a long form tutorial or guide video. Uh, this is the kind of video people would like more of, then I will create more of them. If people hate these kind of videos, then I won't make any more of them. So let me know what you think if you like this short form kind of video or not. With that out of the way, specifically in this video today, I'm going to be discussing caching your assets once they've been loaded in with the content manager. That sounded like a lot when I said that out loud, but this is something that come, that I've seen come up in the Discord discussion a lot recently, especially with new people coming into Monogame, asking what's a good solution for caching their assets once they've loaded them in with the content manager so that those assets around to different classes that may need access to those textures that they loaded or the sound effects that they loaded. And some people come up with some clever solutions like creating some type of global static class that has a dictionary that's accessible with uh, one dictionary for all your textures and you load all your textures into that dictionary and the key would be like the texture name and then you can just access that static dictionary from anywhere in your code base to pull that you know texture out once you need it. And that's that's cool, that's a good solution. However, the content manager already does that for you. And I don't think a lot of people know that, or at least a lot of new people coming in don't know that. We're just gonna jump in real quick and just kind of show you show you what's going on. Um, so here's the MGCB editor. I've already added an image to it. This is just my profile picture that I use on various websites called Aris Turtle. And in my game one class, I've created a private field, uh, which is a texture 2D called Aris Turtle. And then I load the texture in here and then we draw it. It's that simple. So if I run this, any time now, <laughs> there we go. Uh, you can see that it, it, it loads the texture in. So, so that works well, that works well for game one, but what if I want to have this texture accessible in another class? Let's say this is like a background image that uh, all of my, my different levels are gonna need access to this one background image in order to draw that background. Right? How do I make that available to those other classes? Well, one of the obvious solutions is to just pass that texture to the other classes, right? That's, you just pass the dependency along and that, that's a fine solution. Uh, another thing that some people do is they'll make, they'll do like public static on the texture. They'll make the, the texture static there and then they can pass the texture along there. And that, that's another, that's a fine solution. Another thing that I mentioned a moment ago that I see some people do is they'll create like a new class called like global assets. And in here, um, they'll do public static global assets and they'll have a, let me make that a class. And they'll have like a dictionary, public static a dictionary Why can't I type? There we go. Uh, dictionary, they'll have like a string and texture to, right? Uh, and they'll call it textures. Dictionary. Right, they'll, they'll have something like this, right? And so they'll, they'll change their game one so that instead of the texture being loaded from here, uh, they'll instead say texture 2D Harris turtle equals that, and then they'll do global assets dot textures dot add. Um, I don't know, we'll just do name of Aris Turtle, and then we'll give it the Aris Turtle texture, right? And there, and there, right there, you have a global dictionary that's accessible anywhere in your code that contains that texture, and then you can pull that texture out from anywhere in your code because it's static, it's global, it's it's anywhere you, you can access it anywhere, and that that's a fine solution. However, this this solution is something that the content manager already does for you. You don't have to do this. It's it's done for you already. So let's let's take a look real quick at the content manager code, uh, which I've already got <laughs> loaded up right here in preparation for this video. In Monogame, this is the actual load method for the content manager. When you tell it to load an asset and you give it the asset name, uh, disregard the first bit of it. What I wanna focus on right here is this piece right here. If loaded assets, dot try get value key out assets. If asset is T return asset as T. So what is happening here is when you tell the content manager to load an asset, a texture, a sound effect, a song, sprite font, whatever effect, when you tell it to load these assets, it first checks to see if it's already been loaded. It keeps its own dictionary of assets internally 
that you've loaded. They're already cached for you. And if it's already loaded it previously, it just gives you the one that's been loaded previously instead of doing a full disk read to load that from the disk again. If it's not here, if it doesn't detect that it's loaded previously, then it loads it from disk. Here's where it's loading it from disk at. And once it loads it from disk, it caches it in that dictionary for you. So you don't have to create your own method of caching the assets. Content Manager itself already caches the assets. So knowing that, let's switch back over to the code real quick and I'm going to uh, undo some of the stuff I did here just to get me back to where I was. So knowing that right here, I'm loading, loading my texture in, loading texture errors turtle, right? So I'm loading in here. If I were to say right here, if I were to say texture 2D, um, another air turtle, <laughs> can't type another air sort of equals content dot load, not containment content load texture 2D. If I were to do that, this when it loads, it's just going to load the cached asset that the content manager has already cached because I've already loaded it previously. So loading here loads the cached asset instead of a disk read. And that's really cool. That means I can have, you know, multiple load, loading the same texture. I mean, obviously you wouldn't load the same texture right here, one after the other, but the point is, is you can load all you can load your content here in your load content method and now your content manager has has it cached it's already loaded from disk and then somewhere else in your code you can just use that same content manager and say hey content manager give me that asset that's already been loaded and it will just give you that asset you don't have to manage your own form of caching or your your own dictionary somewhere in order to cache those assets it, it does it for you and this is this is especially cool when you get into other things like when you start creating the concept of things like scenes or screens or levels in your game and you want to differentiate things between like global assets and local assets or, or or scene specific assets this is kind of branching into what should be a separate video but i'm going to discuss it very quickly let's say you, you did have the concept of like a scene in your game right so you have this abstract class called scene well, one of the things you can do with this abstract class when you create scenes is you can give it a global content you can put a content manager field or property on it um called global content and then you can do another content manager called local content and that can differentiate between content that's global content that's going to be accessible throughout everywhere in your game no matter what scene you're on that might be uh, background music it might be fonts that you need in order to draw it might be background images or textures that are used across every scene in your game those would be your global content so you load them once inside of your load content method in your game one class they're loaded once there and then you have your scene and when you create the scene you just store the reference to the game content like we've done here you pass in game store the reference to the game content but then you also create another content manager specifically to load content that is specific to this scene content that's not going to be used anywhere else which means when this scene is done with when you change scenes you want to unload those content assets you don't want them in memory anymore so you can just unload them which is the example i've given here we create this load content method and then we have a method called unload for our scene where we can tell the local content to unload and dispose of that content manager and so what this might look like if you did this in your game is let's say we had a uh, level scene um namespace demo public class level scene. and this is inheriting from scene and we need to have the same constructor because it's required uh so level scene takes in a game game and then we just do um can't type base game when we pass the game for it right and we don't we don't need to do anything else here i mean you could if you needed to but you don't need to do anything else and then maybe your scene would have let's add a public uh virtual void load content let's add a load content method in here so your level scene might have a uh might override that load content method and then in here you can do your local content dot load right so you might have private texture 2d 
um, another or example, we would say example texture, right? So you can do local content dot load texture to the example. Example texture. Let me fix my typos. So we could do this, and now this example texture is being loaded in for this scene, specifically for this scene. It's not part of our global content. For our global content like our Aristotle image that I loaded in earlier, that can still be accessed. Like if I had a, um, in my draw method here, right? If I did uh, sprite batch begin, sprite batch end, if I wanted to use that, that global piece, I could just do sprite batch draw global content. Oh, uh, this is a terrible example because uh, you shouldn't be loading in the middle of your draw method. Um, let's do this private texture 2D. This is a better example. Sorry. Shouldn't be loading in the middle of your, middle of your draw method, Aris Turtle. Um, but you can, you can load that global content in here equals global, uh, content dot load <laughs> texture 2D Aris Turtle. I can do that. And, and this global content right here, this global content, remember, is coming from scene here. It's this property, which is just a reference to the content manager that's already in our game class. And in our game class, we've already loaded this air turtle texture in. And because we've already loaded it in our load content here, as part of our global assets, then when it gets to our level scene here and we tell it to load that texture again, it's actually not loading it from disk. It's just reading it from the cache that the content manager itself keeps. So solutions like creating these public static dictionaries that you can store your textures and your, your sound effects and things in, those are great solutions. And visually it might, it, it does, might seem easier to look at your code and see where things are coming from if you do it. And there's nothing wrong with doing it that way point of this video was just to kind of show you that it's already done for you within the content manager itself. It already caches those assets for you. You don't need to create some other dictionary to cache them in to access from other places. They're already there for you in the content manager. So that's it. Uh, short form video. Let's see how long we've been going. 15 minutes. This is definitely not short form. If you found this helpful, let me know. Uh, if you have any questions about this that I can expand on in another video, let me know that as well. If you thought this was absolutely terrible advice, let me know that as well, and I will immediately delete this video. Either way, I hope you all have a great day. I hope you learned something here, and happy coding.